Today we'll be installing Debian 12 Bookworm on a storage space of your choice. On the Debian.org website, we're going to search for the download button. You could explore their website, of course, but what we're looking for here is download, which I see right here. When we hit the download button, the download should start automatically. If it doesn't, you can click the Debian 12 AMD 64 net install. If you have a 64-bit processor, this image will work for you. And since this is the net installer, you'll have to have an internet connection in order to actually proceed with the installation process on the computer that you're choosing to install Debian on. Anyways, save it, let it download. All right, and once the download's finished, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Etcher app. I'm gonna click on Belena Etcher and start things up here. Belen Etcher is an easy to use application available for Linux, Mac, or Windows. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you want to download it, it's free. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk, such as UNet Bootin or Rufus. Some might prefer that. So the first thing we want to do in Belen Etcher is select the image that we just got done downloading. So in my downloads folder, I have Debian 12, the AMD 64 net installer. I'm going to hit open. Next, I'll select which device or USB I want to flash the image onto. So any USB, CDs, or DVDs will be listed in this selected drive. Make sure you select the proper one because it will erase the entire contents of that USB, CD, or DVD. I only have the one and I know it's correct, so I'm gonna hit continue. Since this image is only 700 megabytes, you can do anything really over a gig or more for USB storage, and then you'll be ready to hit the flash button. Once you hit the flash button, you'll be asked to give administrative privileges to Belena Etcher in order to process the flash. Hit yes, and let it start the flashing process. The next part is taking this flashed USB over to the computer that you want to install Debian on. Insert the USB, and then you'll go into your BIOS so you can select this newly flashed USB and make it the first thing to boot in your system. This is done by finding the correct key to launch your BIOS. For some F2, F8, or F12, make sure to look it up for your BIOS brand. I'll show you mine. And once things are completed here, I'm going to exit out. It's just gonna say flash completed if, if everything is successful. I'm gonna exit out of here. And on my computer, when it's first loading up, it's going to ask whether I want to boot in a BIOS. The key for my BIOS is F2 or the delete key. Yours might be something different in order to get in a BIOS. Make sure to look it up for your particular motherboard or computer. So since mine is a newer UEFI based BIOS, Yours might be different, but I can use the mouse and mine, making it a little more convenient. What we're looking for is to change up the boot priority. Conveniently enough for me, it's available here on the right-hand side. So I can look through and try finding the USB that I just got done flashing on, but it doesn't seem to be in one of the top four here. So I can either click the boot menu option F8, but let's go to the advanced mode for me, F7, because this might be what your BIOS more closely resembles. On mine, I have tabs up top, so I can select between the tabs. I have main, AI tweaker, advanced, and boot. Yours might say boot or boot priority. Make sure to find this in your BIOS and then go down. You want to select your boot option number one to be the storage disk, either USB, CD, or DVD that you just got done flashing. So I know mine's a 32 gigabyte USB. So if I look through the list, I should be able to find something that resembles that USB. And here it is right here, my verbatim store and go 1100. It's got about 32 gigs. I know this is the correct one. So I'm going to select storage disk. If you have multiple, avoid selecting the partitions, select the entire disk. So this one's the entire disk. I noticed that by seeing no mention of partitions. Anyways, I'm going to press enter on this and this should be enough to allow us to boot into our live environment or installer. I'll make one more mention here in BIOS. If you are trying to install Linux, you'll want to make sure that you have your secure boot settings disabled or set to another S besides Windows or else your system will keep trying to boot into Windows regardless of what you have put into your computer. Also, if you can find fast boot on your computer, you might want to disable that one as well if you're having trouble booting into your Linux environment. And if you did everything successfully, you'll see a screen similar to this where it says graphical install. You'll want to select the graphical install method and give it a few moments while it loads things up. First thing we're agreed to buy is selecting a language. You'll want to select whatever language you want to use. I'm going to select English and hit continue. Next, you're going to set your location, put in your location, and then hit continue. Now we're asked to configure our keyboard. Again, select it and hit continue. The installer will set up a few additional components here and it will check your network connection. So make sure that you have your network 
plugged into your physical computer. That way it can detect a connection. It can be ethernet or wireless. If you're using wireless, it will ask you for a wireless username and password. And if things succeeded, it will be time to configure your network. First, you're asked for a host name. So this is what other computers will know you as. I'm gonna put Savvy Nick for mine. You can type in whatever you like for yours and hit continue. Here you get the option to select a main name. If you have one, my network doesn't, so I'm going to hit continue. So here's something important to read up on. We have a root user and password. What this means is that you have a user called root and you'll have a separate password from the normal user and your normal user will not have root privileges. And if we look up here, it says the root user should not have an empty password. If you leave this empty, the root account will be disabled and the system's initial user account will be given the power to become root using the sudo command. So this is what most people typically use across other Linux distributions. So I'm going to leave mine empty. If you want a separated root user, you can type in your password here. I'm going to hit continue. Following that, we're asked for a full name for our new user. I'm gonna use a savvy nick for mine. You can use whatever you want for yours and then hit continue. And this one is a username for the account. I'm gonna use savvy nick again. It's already auto filled that for me. Fill it in with that whatever username combination you want and then hit continue. Now we're asked for a password for that new user. Type in your password and make sure to confirm that password below. And then hit continue. Now you're ready to configure your clock and choose a time zone. I'm gonna be in Eastern here today and hit continue. And the installer takes just a few moments and then we're greeted by the partitioning manager, which is how we wanna partition our disks for the installation. Since we're new users, we'll use the guided use entire disk method. There are different options if you're interested, otherwise hit continue. And now we see all of our disks that are available on our system. This is a critical step. This is where you choose the proper disk that is completely empty, which Debian will be installed on. So make sure to select the proper disk, make sure that the size matches up what you would expect and the name of the disk as well. Because if you do have any data or information that's currently on a disk that you've selected, it will be erased after the step. I only currently have the one in the computer, so I'm going to select that one disk and hit continue. Now we're talking about partitioning schemes. Do we want all our files in one partition? Well, it's recommended for new users, so I'm going to stick with that choice and hit continue. So we're getting very close to partitioning our disk and actually applying the changes. So down here it says finish partitioning and write changes to the disk. Here's what's going to happen to our disk. We're gonna create one gigabytes of logical swap. You can of course make changes if you'd like by double clicking, but I'm not gonna do that. We have a primary partition of ext formatted space of 170 gigs. If you have a UEFI based system, you'll actually see some free space, some ESP, about 512 megabytes or a little more. The ext root partition, and after that some free space as well. It's just a little bit of a different setup if you have UEFI enabled BIOS. Not a big deal, all the same. Since I currently have MBR enabled here, this is why mine looks as it does here. When you're ready, hit the finish partitioning and write changes to disk and hit continue. Here's our final warning. As long as we have the proper disk selected, we can hit yes, because now the changes will be written onto the disk and anything and everything on that disk will be deleted. So make sure you double check, in fact, that you have the proper disk selected and then hit continue. At this point, we're installing the base system as well as the rest of the packages needed by the system. This is going to take some time, five to 10 minutes, dependent on your system speed. So take a moment to relax while the installer does its thing. All right, and once the base system is installed, this is to check and see if you have any extra installation media with another media source like a USB, CD, or DVD. You would insert it now and hit yes, so you can select that media, install any extra firmware you may need for the system to work properly. Either way, after you've done this, you can hit continue. This time we're configuring the package manager. Choose the closest country to you so you can use their mirrors from that country in order to install extra packages. I'm in the US, so I'm gonna continue with that. Following that, you can specifically choose a mirror close to your region or area. Look through the mirrors, select whatever you'd like, and then hit continue. If you have proxy information, this is the slide that you would enter it on. I don't, so I'll leave it blank and hit continue. Now the package manager is configuring some packages real quick, including installing extra software that's needed over the internet, and that's why it's important to have an internet connection. We're asked if we want to join in the popularity contest where they anonymously supply data. Well, I'm going to hit no on that and hit continue. Shortly after that, you'll get the software selection screen. This is where you get to select some extra packages if needed. And by default, we have the Debian desktop environment. GNOME is the default. If you don't know what a desktop environment is, 
please look it up because this will dictate what the look and feel of your system is. So there are many different choices below, including some popular ones like XFCE or I go with the default GNOME. If you want a different one, deselect GNOME, select the one that you want. I'm going with GNOME. And of course, I'll keep these standard systems utility selected and hit continue. And now we're retrieving files and getting more packages and software installed real quick. There's around 1400 packages and this is going to be dictated, of course, by your network speed and your computer speed. So this might take a little while to get all the packages down and install the rest of the system anywhere between 10 to 45 minutes, depending on the speed. But I'll meet you on the other side whenever this is finished. We're asked here to install the Grub Bootloader. This is what allows us to select the proper operating system to boot. And since it's the only operating system located on my drive, it is fine for me to select yes and install it on top of the drive. Hit continue and it'll ask where you want to install the bootloader. I'm going to select the only drive that I have. Make sure that you select the proper one that was just formatted. Hit continue and allow the grub bootloader to finish up installing. And once the installation is complete, it's time to boot into your new system. Before we do this, we'll want to make sure as we're hitting continue, we'll probably get a message to remove our installation media. That means the USB that we plugged in for the installation process will have to be removed. If it doesn't say anything, you'll just want to do it as soon as your computer powers down. Down. Otherwise, you'll just boot right back into the installer. Instead, you want to boot into the newly installed systems. Otherwise, that will trick you. You'll want to also disable two things in BIOS, the fast boot option and secure boot option, or you just might directly load into another operating system entirely if it belongs on a different disk. You'll also want to make sure that the first item in your boot priority is the disk where you just got done installing Debian on, so it's the first to boot. All right, if you removed your installation media, you should see the GNU Grub screen. You might have went past this screen automatically since there is a timeout. It doesn't matter. Select Debian GNU Linux if you haven't already and press enter. And great, here's the login screen where we can select the user which we created and type in the password for that user and load things up. And congratulations if you made it this far, you've successfully installed Debian 12 bookworm on your computer. Start messing around. I hope you enjoy your new install of Debian. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.